Good morning. Bonjour from Paris, France. I'm Al Norman. I'm the Lockheed Martin Chief Test Pilot for the F-35. And I wanted to take some time to talk to you about what we're doing here in, in Paris during the Paris Air Show. I think by now all of you had a chance to see the F-35 demonstration, at least on the Internet. What I wanted to do was take a little bit of time and talk you through the demonstration and then have a chance to answer some of your questions. So let's begin. The airplane behind me is a F-35A model from Hill Air Force Base. It's one of the operational jets that the United States Air Force uses. This is one of the two jets that we're using for our demonstration. But rather than show you in that jet, I've brought my other jet with me to show you what we do in the demonstration. <clears throat> the beginning of the demonstration that we have is a takeoff to a slow speed climb showing and showcasing the power of the F-35 with over 40,000 pounds of thrust. We do this at a very slow speed in a climb to vertical showcasing this power. After that, we rotate, pivot, and do a split S down the show line to come back for another maneuver showcasing other capabilities of the F-35, such as our high alpha capability. What we do in this next maneuver we call the square loop. At this, we come up to the vertical, over the top at 50 degrees of angle of attack, come across the top, 50 degrees of angle of attack down, and then recover. This part of the maneuver at the very top showcases the pointing capability and the ability of the F-35 pilot to move the nose where we want to, position the airplane where we want to, and reposition the airplane. All key ingredients of fighting within visual range for a fighter pilot. Next during the demo, you'll see a reposition to a slow speed pass. This slow speed pass passes by at less than 100 knots, showcasing the slow speed ability of the airplane and the controllability of the airplane. This angle of the airplane between where it's going and where it's pointed is what we call angle of attack. The F-35 has the ability to fly at angles of attack greater than what the stall capability of our wings are. We call this post-stall capability. So you watch the airplane fly at a very slow speed and then light the afterburner and rocket its way up to the vertical to a reposition. Our next maneuver is kind of our signature maneuver for fifth generation airplanes and that is a vertical climb to another 50 degree loop, a high alpha loop, to a pedal turn. This pedal turn from below looks amazing and what we're doing with the airplane is using the, the pedal of the airplane to turn and point the nose any place that we want. We have total control of what's going on in the airplane while we're doing this. We could stop the nose at any position. For show purposes, we bring it all the way around to a 360 degree turn. All these maneuvers that I've described to you are maneuvers that we do every day in the F-35. All 400 plus pilots that have flown the F-35 have done this at one time or another. And these are just maneuvers that every F-35 pilot and airplane can do. <clears throat> Once we're done with that, we come back around for what we call a min radius turn. You'll see the airplane come up with the burner lit and come around at around seven G's coming around the corner in a 360 degree turn. From that, there's a pitch up for the end of the show and a landing. That's our show that we're showing at Paris. That's the maneuverability and capability of the F-35, something we wanted to show the world and show the public what all fighter pilots that fly the F-35 know. In addition to its stealth, to its sensor-fused avionics, to its ability to connect all our information to all the other airplanes we fly with, <clears throat> we are a very, very maneuverable airplane. So with that, I think I'll start taking some questions from all of you. It looks like the first one's come in. The question is, what's it like flying with the F-35 helmet that can see through the jet? That's a, that's a great question. Our helmet, not only is the airplane sensor fused, the helmet is sensor fused. Our Generation 3 helmet that we fly with, that we're flying this demo with, 
allows us to see all the parameters of the airplane in our helmet as well as have a night vision camera and use the eyeballs of the airplane which are the DAS cameras, distributed aperture system, six cameras around the airplane and let us see the world in an infrared sense. This gives the pilot an unprecedented view. We can look outside and see things day or night, moonlight or not, all around the world making everything that we do safer. Do we have another question? Great. How long did it take to prepare the demo? Well, this demonstration is not something we just started yesterday. We've been thinking about this and doing this for a while because we, the pilots, thought, boy, we know what happens with this airplane. We know what it can do, but we wanted to show everyone else. So the maneuvers I described, and for the purposes I've described, we put together, refined, did engineering analysis, and literally practiced in our simulators for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours before we even took to the skies. Once we did that, <clears throat> we took the airplane, went out at higher altitudes, worked on our maneuvers, refining our maneuvers, and then brought them down to show altitude, and finally refined and kept the maneuvers within a show area. So, the overall process took closer to a year to develop the show. <clears throat> the next question is, how do you fit the helmet? Our helmet fit facility exists at our two training bases and it's a it's a surreal 21st century experience to get our helmet fit we sit in a chair and our millimeter length measured for our head with lasers as they come across our our head to develop a three-dimensional shape to put inside our helmet lining from there those linings go inside the shell of the helmet with all of our equipment on it the night vision camera the projectors that show the night vision camera, the DAS, and the HUD capability of the airplane. All that is put into our helmet, and then once those liners are fit, then we have that. So it's custom fit for every single pilot. Oh, along that same vein, somebody would like to know who fits the helmet. Well, we have specialists down at uh, both Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, and Luke Air Force Base in Arizona that fit our helmets for us, that know exactly what they're doing to get the best fit possible. We even have a, a little device on the back of our helmet to adjust for the nape to tighten our helmet for every time that we fly. We clip down our ear cups that have noise canceling um, headsets and then we're set to go. The next question is, where is the F-35 built? So that touches home with me, literally, since it's built in Fort Worth, Texas, for most of these A models that you see, for at least from the United States Air Force. But in addition to our factory in Fort Worth, Texas, where we're continuing to ramp up our production, we have opened a factory and started producing airplanes in Camry, Italy. And as a matter of fact, just two weeks ago, we started to fly our very first uh, production airplane from our factory in Nagoya, Japan. So this literally is a worldwide production operation that we have going on in Fort Worth, Texas in the United States, Camry, Italy, and Nagoya, Japan. Next question is, when will the restrictions at Luke Air Force Base be lifted? I, I think the question is referring to some of the restrictions that have been placed on the airplanes and the pilots down at Luke Air Force Base. And, and since that's a, a United States Air Force operation, I really can't comment on that. Those kind of questions will have to be directed to the United States Air Force, and I'm sure they'd be happy to comment. <clears throat> what I can tell you is, from a Lockheed Martin perspective, we're doing everything possible to help the Air Force get all the answers they need and help them uh, with everything they need to get through their situation. Oh, the next question has to do with air shows, and it says, when will the F-35 be at Riyadh? Riyadh is the Royal International Air Tattoo Air Show held every other year in England, in the UK, as a precursor to Farnborough. This is an off year, uh, well, it's held every year before that. Since we're here at Paris, we would show up at, at uh, Riyadh uh, on the years when we show up to Farnborough. I can't tell you right now what our plans are for next year, 
but um, if we if we happen to go to Riyadh, the soonest it would be would be next year. The next question is: Is the demo, demo done with full fuel tanks? <clears throat> we could do the demo with full fuel tanks. In fact, the A model that you see behind me carries 18,000 pounds of fuel internally. 18,000 pounds. <clears throat> The F-16, when it's fully fueled, only carries 7,000 pounds of fuel. What I will say is, in order to do the demo, and we have to keep the demo fairly short to fit within the time constraints of the air show restrictions, we have between six and eight minutes to complete from our takeoff to our landing and exiting the runway, <clears throat> that we keep our fuel load such that we fly the demo and have normal landing fuels to land so uh, uh, that we keep that in order of what we usually do. Again, we could fly this demo at any fuel weight. I think the key takeaway is that we fly this demo in an airplane that is at combat configured weights with fuel. It's combat configured weights if we carried weapons internally. So that is the demo that you're seeing before you from Paris. The next question is, can you take a GoPro camera in the cockpit so we can see what our view is like. Well, that's a great idea. I wish I could. Um, our, taking things within the cockpit are part of the purview of the, the uh, instructions and regulations that we have to fly with. And right now, I think that's beyond uh, what our military allows us to use within the cockpits. But a great question. So the next question is, what does it feel like to pull Gs? This airplane is a 9G airplane when we have our final configuration. G's to a pilot are G's, in other words, the force of gravity on the pilot's body as we make a turn. The tighter we make a turn, the more G's that we pull. As I said, this is a 9G jet. That tends to be the limit of G forces that a pilot is able to sustain for any length of time. So, as a pilot, what we do is we train for that. We learn how to deal with G forces, whether it's in this airplane or any other airplane. <clears throat> and we also wear equipment that help us manage those G-forces. I think everybody's seen what our G-suits look like, lower garments that uh, help compress our blood to help it make, make it easier for us to, uh, to turn around and, make, and deal with the nine Gs. We're waiting on the next question for you. Oh, <clears throat> when will 3F software be ready? So the person asking this question definitely knows something about our program. As we develop the program, the aircraft that you see behind me is the first operationally capable F-35 for the United States Air Force. This has what we call 3I, three initial software. We are in the process of doing the finishing phases of testing on our 3 final or 3F software. In just a few months, we're going to start flying jets from our factory in Fort Worth that contain that 3F software. By the end of the year, the beginning of next year, all the jets in the fleet that are capable will be retrofit and start flying with the 3F software. Oh, good question. What does it feel like to fly the F-35? I'll tell you, I, I've been very privileged in my flying career. I've, I've had a chance to fly over 70 different kinds of airplanes over 7,000 hours of flying time doing that, and I love flying the F-35. I fly all three variants, the A model, the B model, the C model. And honestly, the only difference between the airplanes is how we take off and land. Um, from my perspective, being in the cockpit of the F-35 is just a dream come tr true. It's a pleasure to fly. It's honestly, and don't tell anybody, it's the easiest airplane I've ever flown in my life. Um, the things that we've done with the flight control system, the power and the ability for the engine and the propulsion system to take care of itself, make this airplane one of the safest airplanes I've ever been in and one of the easiest airplanes I've ever been in to fly. The next question has to do with uh, what's my favorite feature of the airplane? Well, um, I don't go into combat anymore, but boy, I'll tell you, if I ever was, if I was still one of the ones going to combat and what should make it one of the favorite features of, of all pilots is the ability of this airplane through its stealth, through its sensor fusion, through its 
interconnectivity, through its interoperability, allow a pilot to operate in a sense we never had before and to have a total sense of situational awareness that we never had before. So how does that translate to the pilot? It makes this the most survivable and lethal airplane they've ever flown. That to me is a key element of hands down of this airplane. Ah, okay, so I mentioned that, uh, <clears throat> that I've flown over 70 different kinds of airplanes. One of the airplanes I had just come from, I was one of the original F-22 test pilots. Ten years ago, we made our debut uh, at, of, of air shows with the F-22, and the question has to do with, now that we're a decade later, what's it like being here with the next fifth-gen airplane, the F-35? I'll tell you, this has been a pleasure. Uh, the, uh, the, the sensation and the reward that we get of being able to show everybody what we in the cockpit, in my little flying office, know on a daily basis it is very, very rewarding. And our ability to share it with you and share it with the world uh, is, is uh, I, I'd, I'd have to say, it was one of the pinnacles of my career. I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much. And we really appreciate you joining us today at Paris, France. Bonjour.